So if I could give you one piece of advice as a project manager, what I would tell you is don't ever embark on a project unless you have time, cost, and scope established on the front end. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kayla and this is where we talk all about project management in startups and lean teams. On today's episode, I wanna do a follow-up to the video that I most recently released called How to Manage a Project. And what I gave you in that video was sort of a very loose step-by-step -step of how to manage a project, how I manage a project, what some of those key pieces are that I like to have in each and every one of my projects. But what I also told you in that video, I gave you the caveat of there are as many different ways to manage projects as there are projects. There's a million different ways, a million uh, and infinity different ways to manage a project. Every project is different. Every team is different. Every company is different. There's so many different tools and techniques. So I never want to come across as prescriptive. I want to be really careful about that because the information that I give you on this channel is meant to empower you, help you gain confidence in your own project management skills, and give you what you need to to go out there and start making executive decisions on your own projects because I understand they are all different and I can't sit here and tell you how to manage your projects. You have to make those decisions yourself. But what happened after I released that last video, how to manage a project, is I got a lot of feedback from you guys saying, hey, could you be even more specific? Could you actually walk us through one of your projects step by step and show us how it's done? And again, I want to be really careful about that, but that is something that I want to give to you in the future. I'm thinking through how I want to do that. But before I do that, I thought, you know what, I really need to make this video. This video about like if there is one thing that I could tell you about project management, this would be it. Like this is really the key advice that you need to uh, gain confidence in taking charge of your projects and knowing how to get them started on the right foot. So that's what this video is about. We're going to talk about the three things that you need to be aware of and have in place at project initiation. And if you have any background in project management, done any sort of like education at all in project management, then these three things will not be a secret to you. These three things are time, cost, and scope. But we're going to talk about them a little more in depth here and in a way that I hope sort of enlightens you to why they are so important to your project and how you can gain more control over them. So here we go. So if I could give you one piece of advice as a project manager, what I would tell you is don't ever embark on a project unless you have time, cost, and scope established on the front end, okay? And what I will tell you as an experienced project manager, the projects don't just land on your lap in that format. Oftentimes they don't, especially if you're working with smaller teams, um, less organized companies, the projects are not going to nice and neatly land on your lap. You're going to have to do some legwork. You're gonna have to do some figuring out in terms of how long is this thing gonna take and how much will it cost? And you may have to do some legwork on scope as well. So as a project manager, keep that in mind. You need to be really careful Anytime a request comes to you or anytime you are pulled into a new project, this is the time when you need to really have your thinking cap on <laughs> and um, be very discerning in terms of what is being asked of you. Okay, so let's talk about time, cost, and quality. I like to have each one of these at least roughly <laughs> identified at project initiation. And depending on the type of the project and the breadth of the project, all of this kind of stuff, it doesn't have to necessarily be super specific at the initiation phase. Again, it's going to depend, but I like to have an idea of each one of these things at initiation. And so with time, often I will have people come to me and be like, we have no idea how long this could take. Like it could take anywhere from this amount of time to that amount of time. And I'm like, oh, super great. Okay, so we have a range. We know it could take anywhere from this amount of time to that amount of time. I'm really happy with that because then I at least have some point of reference. I think the more questions that you ask around this, the better. I like to, if it's a project that I have no point of reference for, I have not 
done a project like this before, it's something completely new to me, maybe new to my team, then I will want to go talk with someone who has done something similar in the past, been a part of a project similar in the past, uh, go talk to a subject matter expert, and just get a rough idea. I always like to, to let people know, I'm not holding you to this, like this is not something you need to sign off on, but I need to understand as a project manager, uh, roughly how long something is going to take. Now, many of my projects that I work on now, I have done something similar in the past, so I'm able to make educated guesses or I'm able to work with my team to make an educated guess on uh, the time frame for the project. Sometimes what happens is we have a client who establishes the time for us at, at initiation, like I need such and such delivered by such and such date. In that case, I do want to go also have communication with my team to make sure that that is something that would be achievable, to make sure we have enough people and resources and all of that on hand to achieve completion by whatever date it is that our client says. Typically, you need to do some research. You need to do some legwork to figure out what is possible, what's achievable, how firm is the timeline if it's being mandated from a client or a stakeholder or whoever. Sometimes I get projects where it's just like, we just need this thing. We have no idea how long it'll take. There's no expectation on the stakeholder side. I know that sounds crazy, but this happens. And in that case, you may feel as the project manager that you don't really need to do any work on the timeline, you may be like, well, if the stakeholder doesn't care and if there's no like urgent need for it, then why should I care as the project manager? But you should care because that is your job. <laughs> so make sure that you are um, doing the work that you need to at least get a rough idea at that initiation stage what the time involved will be. And one way you could do that if you have a big project and there's like multiple stages, you have multiple milestones, break those milestones down and just get like rough, rough estimates for time. I always like to add a buffer. I've heard different numbers from anywhere from like 10 to 20 percent. You will want to do that and as the project manager that's something that you need to own even if it feels like nobody else cares and it doesn't matter to anyone else you need to care about it and you need to have a good handle on that time element. So make sure you figure that out at initiation. And then of course, once you get into planning and your work breakdown structure and all of that kind of stuff, you will develop a more a more firm timeline. You will, you will have a better idea how long things will take. But at that initiation phase, if you don't have a timeline, like if that just doesn't exist, if you're just out there doing things without any sort of control around the time, it's not a well-run project. That is not how a project should be run because things can really get out of control. You can waste a lot of time. You can waste a lot of resources. It can um, just all blow up in your face. So you need to have a good handle on time. Another thing that I like to do is I like to establish meetings with my stakeholders, regular meetings, and I like to let them know what will be expected in these meetings. And this is another way of bringing that time element to the forefront to make sure everyone's really respectful of time and that we are setting aside time every week to make sure that we are making progress. There are going to be things expected of people. This is another way that you can wrangle that piece of the puzzle. Okay, so that's time. Now, cost, okay, budget. If we don't have a budget for the project, what the heck are we doing? And you, again, would be surprised by how many times there just isn't a budget at the initiation phase where nobody knows and nobody is taking charge of that. As a project manager, that that's a red flag, okay? That's a red flag to you. Not that the project shouldn't go on, but it's a flag to you that you need to help figure that out. You need to help figure out the budget piece. And the way that you do that would be similar to the time piece. If it's a project that you have a good point of reference for, that you've done before, you could use another project as a baseline. Um, if it's something that you're not familiar with, but someone on your team is or you have a subject matter expert, have conversations with those people. You need to do the legwork and the research to get that piece figured out. What, what I'm telling you is don't embark on a project without 
a budget in place because, again, you're really just setting yourself up for failure and we don't want that. We want you to be successful as a project manager. So make sure you have that budget piece figured out, even if it's just something rough, even if you're just getting responses like, I don't know, it could cost anywhere from this amount to that amount. Try to like narrow that in as much as possible uh, so that you can have a really clear budget. Now, the last piece is your scope. And again, depending on the type of project that you're working on, maybe you have a statement of work. Maybe your statement of work, I've been in this situation where maybe your statement of work is vague and it needs to be more specific. Ask those questions as the project manager. That's actually going to help you with the time and the budget piece as well. So if you know it's vague, ask those questions up front. Try to get as much clarity as possible up front so that you can set yourself up to be a successful project manager. Now, if you don't have any statement of work whatsoever and it's just a request from someone you need to get something formal something in writing that says this is what the project is here are what the expectations are so that you can run with it and start to explore the time and the cost elements of that project or work with whoever it is in your team that is supposed to do that now in some organizations that would be outside of your responsibilities as the project manager and um it needs to be someone else who is putting that together. If so, as a project manager, it's your responsibility to put it back on whoever it needs to go back on. My point in this video is for you to please, please, please be aware of the fact that if you do not have time, cost, and scope figured out on the front end of your project, then you're setting yourself up for failure. So I hope this is helpful for you as you are going out and managing your projects. Make sure that you always have time, cost, and scope in place. Good luck. Let me know what questions you have, and I'll see you next time. Bye.